Cattle Decapitation's new record is out. It's phenomenal, and we're going to talk about it in this tier list. The entire discography, folks, from front to bottom. I don't think you want to miss this one. I want to preface this. This is one of our favorite bands of probably all time. Their earlier discography is very hit or miss, and it may sound negative in the beginning, but I will tell you, we have a lot of really great things to say towards the end. Just stay tuned. Nineteen ninety nine human jerky. You all should by now be pretty aware of my feelings towards grindcore. I think it's too often, okay? Too often I think it's lazy, disingenuous to its punk ancestors. And unless you're seeing it live, I just don't think it's that fun to listen to. When you and I made the joke band Anal Bead Nectar, that was the type of immature stupidity and immaturity that like we were going for. The production on this is horrific, and I will say, however, I did not listen to the remaster, which shame on me for not being able to get that one on my ears. The, I think that the playing, regardless of how it's mastered, is pretty sloppy, which is par for the course for this. The gurgling vocals are a very nice touch. It really sounds like you're inside the guts of Travis Ryan. But circa 1999, the shit had already been done before, so it's really not super novel. If you put this on in my house or like where we're hanging out, I'm just going to leave. I don't like this album very much. Wow, I'm really kicking it off with some positivity. <laughs> All right, I'll bring us back to the middle a little bit. I will say, although I don't really like Grindcore that much either, when it is on, it's on. And I had a lot of fun revisiting the earlier catalog. And I will admit, I when I went in, I thought I was going to just hate everything. I didn't hate Human Jerky. The remastered version of this record is actually pretty freaking awesome. It sounds really good. And you know what? There's some pretty fucking sick riffs on this record. Each song is basically less than a minute, which feels like it's a joke grindcore album in a lot of ways, but it's just done right. Like the riff, for example, on Parasitic Infestation, check this out. Get the fuck out of here, bro. It's so awesome. There's some really great stuff here and it's sort of initial light in the engine that gets the band going and it makes me really happy. It's gross. It gets in, gets out super quick and it's effective with some really original ideas and I enjoyed it. All right, okay. Well, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go C tier. You're going C, I have it at D. I'd be willing to put it at C. Oh, you're willing? I'm willing and able. Is your name able? Human jerky, C. All right. All right, now I'm gonna be the bummer. I don't really like Home of Ore that came out in the year 2000. There's some cool riffs and drum sections and the vocals are obviously awesome because it's Travis Ryan. The musicianship on this record though, it's just not that great. It's not that impressive or great sounding either. Even the remaster sounds like it's just polishing something that doesn't sound that good. There are some cool riffs though, especially during Colostomy Jigsaw Puzzle. I'll <laughs> check this out. What a wicked creative way to mess with chaos and grossness. And that's something that they just keep doing throughout their discography. In general, it's just a really fast and technical record, but nothing more than your typical grindcore riffs, which isn't enough to keep me. Yeah, man, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention that Cattle Decapitation started as a three-piece band, guitars, drums, and vocals. And I think you can tell, especially in this album, that bass is basically just like an afterthought. It's just following the guitar riffs and trying to keep things chunky. But they are still riding very heavily into that grind punk vibe. This song introducing songs like Mauled and Human Jerky, which showcase their ability to write songs that are longer than 40 seconds. Actually, Mauled is one of my standout songs. Check out the section in that. There are definitely some okay moments on this one and glimpses into what the band would inevitably become. But like you, I just don't connect very well with this one. Travis's vocals are disjointed in the cadence and delivery. It's it like doesn't sound like he like 
cared like if they like matched up or not and that just it seems lazy to me and i get what they were going for it's like chaotic and stuff but i don't know cool lyrics definitely much more fun than human jerky i th still think this is pretty weak though i gave it a c minus i think that's totally justified i gave it a d okay let's put it a d let's put it in a d i knew at least one of these albums was going to be in the d tier they can go back and forth <laughs> To serve man 2002. This was really around the time where I personally started to discover extreme music and the classic death grind album was served to me. It was pretty tough to digest, especially the underdeveloped half baked grind that the band had been messing with. So how about now, 21 years later? I think the production is still very 2002 with the drums sounding very clicky and thumpy. I gotta say, man, I absolutely hate the snare tone on this record. It's horrible. It's mechanical, especially during the blasting sections where it's like literally exhausting to listen to. Here, get exhausted. Time to get exhausted. Yeah, despite the horrific 2002 triggered drum sounds, the band has finally found like strong bass and guitar tones that stand on their own. This is a step in a much more focused direction. However, they still have a lot of work to go on their death metal elements. Uh, to Serve Man is one of the highlight songs. That was one of the first songs I ever heard by them and Writhe in Putrescence. I will say that To Serve Man has some slight improvements, but not enough for me to really enjoy the record and go back and revisit it another time. I do really like the vocal mix though on here. The music sounds pretty bad, but the vocal mix, super wet and very grotesque. It feels it's like your ears are just filling with grossness. And that's pretty cool. The mix isn't good at all, though. Like you said, you can barely hear the band. It's really sloppy at times, and it just kills the vibe in a lot of ways. I will say, though, there are some sick riffs on this record. Check out the part from I Eat Your Skin. It just doesn't hold a candle as a record to their later works, unfortunately. So I threw this one in D tier. Okay, yeah, I believe I have it at like C minus or C. So let's maybe put it in like a C minus underneath the human jerky. And if you aren't aware of our parameters, what we like to do is like we have to, what are we doing? Two and e an S each now? We each, yeah, we each get an S pick. Yep. And then we have two and A, and then the rest is whatever. Whatevs. So yeah, stay tuned for our S picks. <laughs> Sometimes we come out right out the gate with the S picks, but not this time. This is a band that grew up. Oh, for sure. And you can tell, and we're getting to it. So stay tuned. Now let's talk about Humanure in 2004. <laughs> This is where you start to see the band innovating with groove and death metal influences. And I would argue that this is where you're starting to get their death grind sound versus just grindcore. This kind of feels like an old school death metal record in a lot of ways with sloppy takes and all, but this time the sloppiness adds to the character in a way that just works. The mix is very scooped. But it sounds vile as hell and I dig it. I love how everything comes together here during songs like the title track. Check this out. It's a good record with quite a bit of filler though. Some fun songs if you want to make a playlist, but in general, I would say it's a run of the mill mid tier record. I put it at C. Okay, yeah, I have it at B minus. I pretty distinctly remember that this was the album at this time that put Cattle Decap on the map. The Cattle Decap map. Like a dedicated and focused lab scientist, the band worked their fucking ass off to delicately blend, mix, and balance their filthy, disgusting grindcore root with their love for extreme metal. Not just death metal, but you start to see them pulling in black metal tropes and stuff like that. The music is still chaotic and filthy, but this time the band isn't afraid to introduce atmosphere. Wow! They like have parts that open up the song. Holy shit, imagine that, it's incredible. Why do we like that as listeners? It builds anticipation. It leaves us waiting and wanting for the next part to resolve. Check out what I mean. You know, 
as a fan of their most recent work, I really think that this was a big improvement in their back catalog. They started to include things like solos and bridges and outros and resolutions, all the stuff that masterful songwriters spend their whole lives mastering. I'd definitely be pulling off some tracks for this one for a playlist. I have it at B minus, you have it at C. I definitely, uh, looking back at my script, I feel like I put it at an A because <laughs> the way I talked about it. It's fine. There's definitely like a few really good songs on here. Chumified, Bukaki Tsunami, Reduced to Pace. Those were great songs. Yeah, I would say we could throw it. I would say it's better than the ones that are already in C. Yeah. Let's throw it in B for now. Okay, for now. I think that's going to be a temporary stay. Yeah, I think it's going to be at the end of B. Yeah. Just like the human is coming out the end of the cow. Right. <laughs> A bloody karma 2006 a wicked surprise this one and the harvest floor were basically unnoticed by me that was my own fault sorry about that yeah. looking back at this i would say that this is definitely their experimental record for what they were doing at the time we start to see elements of what they would eventually really lean into much tighter compositions that are still influenced by grind wild vocal ranges and styles, super tight riffs in an absolutely grotesque, apocalyptic atmosphere. The band really starts to sprinkle in those black metal influences with tremolo guitars, higher frequency screams, and just an overall vibe of sinister and wicked. This is very cool because this is the album that starts to showcase cattle decapitation's really broadened range. <laughs> I thought the title track was incredible. The Carcass Derek, which is like the funniest fucking... They have amazing song title names. Yeah. And New Dawn, I thought were all really good songs. I put it at B. Okay. This is a big mix upgrade in particular, especially from Humanor. It sounds huge. It sounds old school too. So that's a really nice play that they have there. Travis, like you said, sounds especially meaty here with the growls and also his Smeagol screams, which just sound awesome. I love the band leading into moments of syncopation too. Like for example, during Unintelligent Design, check out this clip here. I feel very similar about this album though that I feel to Humanure, but it's got better production. So for me, it's a little bit more elevated, but it's still a mid-tier run-of-the-mill record for me. So I have it in C tier. Okay. And you have it in B. Yeah, I'd probably would put it alongside Humanure. Okay. It's a little better than Humanure. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit more focused. Yeah. The Harvest Floor in 2009. This is the beginning of a massive and steady increase in musical quality from Cattle Decapitation, where they would release three, maybe four. We'll see. Wink absolute masterpieces up to 2023. This is where Cattle Decap started to get their signature sound from Travis Ryan, starting to do his weird, clean, shrieking vocals, and also adding cinematic qualities to the music, which I absolutely love. One of my favorite moments of their entire discography is on this record, and that's in Tooth Enamel and Concrete. Listen to this fucking monster. Those bass runs, fuck, so awesome. <laughs> the riffs on this album are much less grindcore oriented. By this point, the band has fully evolved into their death grind style, which to me is fully welcome, but this is a B tier album for me. Okay. Yeah, this album feel, felt like a pretty acceptable follow-up to Karma Bloody Karma, mainly because it was still trying out some of the formulas and tropes that were introduced on that album. Some of the grindcore tropes I find like the wacky doodle sloppy sweeping solos and chirping guitars following weird polyrhythms are much more in your face. Here, check out one of those wacky doodle solos, wacky. <laughs> Given where the band is currently, man, and what they would end up doing with Wink, Monolith of Inhumanity, I really can't shit on this too much. 
I do think it's underwhelming, though. I have it at C+. There's definitely a few standout songs, like The Ripe Beneath the Rind, The Gardeners of Eden. But No, I think it's fine. Okay. It's definitely better than these two, so let's throw it in B tier towards okay. the end. Oh, boy! Oh! <laughs> of inhumanity in 2012 for most people this is their s tier and i totally get it dude i really do if you're in that camp respect it's a fucking masterpiece of death grind for a reason this is the first extensive use of travis ryan's beloved goblin voice and throughout this album it was used to tremendous effect adding both power and atmosphere to every single song that he used it on the riffs on this record are fantastic too and mind-blowingly original for example the way travis completely elevates the section of a living breathing piece of defecating meat just makes this album supremely special check this out As much as I adore this record, there's one that I reserve for S tier, and you'll see in a sec, but for me, this is A tier. A living, breathing piece of navigating me. This album marks my favorite epoch of the band, dude. I appreciate the fuck out of their willingness to lean into their experimental sounds, becoming a four piece and just blossoming into a metal band whose music is just as strong as their liberal social commentary. It's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> My absolute favorite part of this album is in the closing track where he goes, Hair in the garden. Dude, fucking goosebumps every time. Check that part out. I did not do it justice. You kind of did. What helped to put this band on the map outside of the strong modern production on this record was their use of disgusting visuals in their music videos. I'm sure you all remember when these were like getting banned and copyrighted and stuff like when YouTube was, you know, so in its like teenage phase, but geez, man, this has been par for the course for this band with the disgust, the filth, the griminess. Musically, this album is still extreme while giving the listener moments to rest and refit for the inhumanity that is on this album. I love this one. Not quite my S tier though. I have it at A plus basically. Maybe, yeah, that's a, it's, it's, okay. If I had more room for S tiers, I would put it in it, but. Yeah. So we're gonna put Monolith up there. The Anthropocetic Station. 2015, this album fucking rips, dude. It's a great follow-up to Monolith, but I don't think it comes quite to up to par with how incredible that album is. Regardless, there are a bunch of songs on here that are absolute monsters. This band has done an amazing job in this era of their music to really bookend the albums, having a super strong opener and closer. Check out what I mean in this beast of an opening track, Manufactured Extinct. There are other songs on here like Mammals in Babylon and Clandestine Ways that will just fucking beat your head with a bag of bricks. I respect them for digging their heels in with their new sounds and really swinging for the fences on this. I have it at B+. I like it a lot. Nice. Okay, so we've got some similar thoughts on this one. It's another phenomenal record in their discography, but the production was somehow even better than Monolith. But I would say that the album has a little bit of bloat in comparison in terms of the songwriting. What I do love, though, are the cinematic qualities. That part of the record is where the band gets really special for me. And I'll get to that shortly for another record that we're about to talk about. For example, on Anthropocene, Travis actually has a killer clean voice that he uses sometimes. And when he uses it on Ave Extitium, it made me want this more. And he starts to use in other parts of the discography. Check this out. Great record that I do often revisit, but you know what? I still got my spot reserved for rest here. I gave this one A minus. Nice. Yeah. Let's throw it at A. Now we're going to get in the weeds here because holy shit, we've got some. Uh... Here we fucking go! Oh, 
Death Atlas 2019. I am obsessed with this album. To be honest, it might be one of my favorite metal albums ever written. We should update our favorite metal albums of all time. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> we got to do that. Anyways, the main reason why I love Death Atlas more than Monolith is because it's cinematic as hell. And it tells a completely cohesive and killer story from front to back. Every song feels deliberate and absolutely kills. I throw this album on from start to finish and I love every second of it. One of the best moments in all of metal is the ending of the title track on this record. Listen to this absolutely fucking monstrous section where they somehow make us feel like it's the end of the goddamn world. You get Travis's full gamut of vocal ability in this song too, and it just destroys. This is without a doubt my S tier, man. Death Atlas, S tier. I cannot blame you, man, and I fully support that. Somehow I find that this album is how utterly chaotic and accessible, dude. They've just found that small zone where they can put that focus in, and it just fucking works, dude. When technical music is written with the intention of being accessible, it's usually like self-promoting wankery of like, look what I can do, look what I can do. This album is equal parts technical, grotesque, and introspective, dude. It might be a little bloated. I have to give the band the respect f that they deserve for leaning into the sounds that they've been trying and fucking with since the mid 2000s. Yeah, going from a flat out grindcore band to a progressive technical death metal band, dude, that's no small feat at all. These guys have done it with awe inspiring focus. One of the best modern death metal albums of our time, dude. Fucking put it at S. I support you <laughs> Plus, you got this weird thing where you have this nostradamus stuff where they wrote a song called bring back the plague and then COVID 19 yeah. happened yep so anyone who is looking for some prophetic inspiration oh. here you go i listen to that song and i'm like that didn't age well but no. it's also really funny <laughs> like they've been like on the cutting edge of like social commentary and shit yeah it's like how south park has been doing it or like the simpsons where like they were talking about it and then it happens and then you're like, oh shit, somebody had an idea. Travis Ryan has foresight abilities. Terracite 2023. Dude, I gotta say, man, the trajectory of this band, this has been fucking insane. This is why they are one of our favorites. If you played Human Jerky and then Terracite and told me this is the same band, I would call you a big, fat, filthy liar face. You're going to call me a big, fat, filthy liar face? <laughs> but here they are with Terracite, and it is, in my opinion, their monolith, dude. I didn't think monolith or Death Atlas could be topped, but fuck, dude. Holy shit. This is the strongest contender for album of the year so far. It is going to be at the top of the heap for me. This is my S tier for sure. Dude, I just didn't think that they would be able to top Death Atlas. It's so fucking good, man. But they took that formula and I think they perfected it, man. This is one of those albums where I do think it's a little bit long, but I just don't know what I would cut. Versus Death Atlas, I might trim a track or two. I think that this is practically perfect in every way. Just Another Body is very well could be one of the greatest death metal songs of all time and easily is the best cattle decapitation song. I love this, man. This is fantastic, phenomenal, incredible. Don't agree with you at all. This album is fucking terra sight, terrible. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I absolutely love this record. It's absolutely disgusting in all of the best ways. This record is tight as hell, man. It might be their best produced record yet thanks to dave otero everything sounds clear deliberate and absolutely in your face and that bass tone is gnarly as hell i absolutely love it the riffs are so freaking cool too and i love how much distortion is on the bass filling in that filth right alongside those beastly guitar riffs one of the best parts of the entire record is the ending of the single we eat our young just listen to this beast I love this record, man. It's easily one of the best in their entire catalog. Does it dethrone Atlas from S tier for me? No, but it is absolutely going to be hitting my rotation for years to come. It is an amazing record. I don't blame you for putting it in an S. Yeah, man. I can look at this and be like, yep, that's basically how I would listen to this band. 
for more or less. What do you think? Any modification? I agree with pretty much everything here, except for maybe move. Harvest floor up a little bit. Up over bl karma, bloody karma. Uh, other than that, I think that's perfect. Yeah. And if I were to tell anyone to listen to this band, I would say the top four. Oh, dude, 100%. 100%. And, and if you're curious to see like their roots and everything, yeah, go check out the older Death Grind stuff. That stuff is, it's fine. It's fun. Like I said, some songs are cool, worth putting on a playlist or something. And it's just really cool to see like where this band has come from and what they started with and how they've gotten to where they are now. Yeah, it's an absolutely killer progression. One of the best in metal, in my opinion. Yep. Okay, bye. Gotta go. What did you think of the new album, Terrasite? Let us know down in the comments below and check out our other tier list right here. Go with the gods, Forge Mates. The Terrasite will encompass you.